On day one, I was just a little T-Rex out with my Uncle Benosaurus searching for food. Come on, my boy. Keep up. I'm trying. Suddenly, the sky split open, only to reveal a giant meteor crashing down. Its giant explosion caused the entire terrain to shake. And from its blast, a wave of radioactivity shot out through our entire valley. I tried to escape. But the blast hit me, transforming me into a strange radioactive spider rex? My goodness, what happened to you? I don't know, I... But we were cut off by a large mutated pterodactyl that swooped in, blasting my uncle to the side. No! Wait, a green goblin pterodactyl? Huh? to me. I feel so much stronger with this new power. Let's see who the real predator is now. He cackled maniacally as he lifted my Uncle Benosaurus and began flying off. Fozo, run! No, get back here! On day two, I was running after them, trying to follow the goblin pterodactyl. Oh, come on. Where did he go? As I was looking up, I didn't even notice that I was running right towards a ravine. Ah! But out of instinct, I shot out a web? What the heck? Ah! Ah! Ouch! Whoa, did that meteor give me powers? I tried to shoot out more webs, but nothing happened. I can't even control them? Great, I have to find out what's going on and find my uncle. I made my way out of the ravine and saw a dodo bird frantically trying to catch his breath. Hey, you, did you see a pterodactyl anywhere? He took my- A pterodactyl? What? No, I've got my own problems to deal with right now. Hey, where are you going? I followed him until we ended up at the edge of a jungle. There was nothing but rumbling and destruction. <laughs> that meteor, it caused something to start rampaging through my home. It's destroying everything. That meteor changed a lot more than I thought. Yeah, and I saw where it landed too. Wait, really? Where? On day three, the dodo brought me to a part of the forest with a huge crater formed by a radioactive meteor? Maybe the pterodactyl came here. I stopped when I noticed tiny lizards were lining up to enter inside of it. And on the other end were mutated ones walking out. <laughs> Whatever's down there is probably what turned me into this. I have to go inside. Yeah, have fun with that. Once I made it in, the tunnel of small lizards then led me to the center of the meteor. And there was its radioactive core. What a find! Keep growing, my fellow tiny reptilians! <laughs> After a second glance, I saw that my uncle and the pterodactyl were nowhere to be found. Because of this, the mutated lizard saw me. Is someone trying to steal our special magical rock? Get him! On day four, some of the tiny lizards rushed in, trying to bite me? Aw, they're so small and adorable. No, you idiots! I meant the mutated ones! Oh. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The mutated ones then all charged in. Ah! In a panic, I shot out a web that swung me up and I stuck to the ceiling. What the? What kind of freak are you? How many powers do I have? But as I said this, I started to slip and I still can't control them. Ah! I swung and headed straight for the meteor's core. Ah! I shattered it, and because of this, radioactivity began to flow within me, causing me to grow in strength. I gained five more hearts, and now I could roar out spider webs at will. Whoa. You stupid dinosaur. You broke our rock. 
You'll pay for this! I looked around, only to realize I was completely surrounded by the lizards. Oh no. On day five, I was sprinting through a tunnel with a mob of angry lizards right behind me! What did you do? It's a long story! I barely made it out before spinning around to use my new roar to web off the meteor's exit. I promise you, this isn't over! Whoa, dude, did you grow? Yeah, it looks like that meteor is mutating a lot of creatures, including the one that took my uncle. Hey, you! Ah, another lizard! Calm down, I'm not gonna hurt you. But wait, weren't you with those guys? Yeah, I was. I'm not a fan of the whole mutating our bodies into big, ugly, buff reptiles thing. Oh, uh, no offense. None taken. The tiny lizard started to walk away from the crater. Wait, what do you want? A few hours ago, I saw a deadly pterodactyl carrying a T-Rex overhead. My uncle. Yeah, I thought so. And I'll tell you where they went, but on one condition. On day six, the three of us found a nice, safe place in the jungle. So, all you want is for us to keep you safe? Yeah, and this place is perfect for that. I mean, look at me, and look at you. Yeah, good point. With that, I got to work using my spider abilities to build myself a fossilized home. I was even able to make a little apartment interior for myself. Nice. Then I noticed the dodo bird making himself a home with a map planning table inside. Hey, what's this for? With everything going on, you'll need all the help you can get. I can be your guy in the chair. The name's Ned. Nice to finally meet you. I was then interrupted by the same maniacal laugh I heard days ago. The goblin pterodactyl. Hurry up! I think I know where he's headed! On day seven, I hurried through the forest, following the maniacal laughter. I'm close. It didn't take long for me to reach a tribal dinosaur town that was in complete ruins. Yes! From high above, the goblin pterodactyl dropped a heavy stone cage on some of the strong looking dinosaurs. I wanted to help, but then smaller pterodactyls swooped in, trapping more of the dinosaurs and picking them up in the air. He's capturing more dinosaurs? But why? Hello, alphas. Who's the real predator now? Hmm? It's me. When the big boom is ready, all of you will be history, and the forests will learn why the winged are superior! <laughs> he unleashed a powerful blast, exploding one of the buildings entirely. Big boom? What is he planning? Now, bring these prisoners back to the stone peaks! All the pterodactyls flew off with the cages, leaving the town deserted. The Stone Peaks? Is that where they live? That's right! And I know just where that is! Come with me! I followed along until we reached a beach cove filled with sacred crystal shards. Whoa! And far beyond, I could see the foot of the Stone Peaks. My uncle, he's in there. On day eight, the lizard headed back home as I began to run through the crystal coves. But out of nowhere, a group of masked dinosaurs emerged from the sand. Ah, hey, what the? Halt, newcomer, and leave now! What? No, I need to get past here to get to the stone peaks. We own these coves and do not permit any trespassers! Uh, uh, <clears throat> Although... They quickly huddled together, whispering amongst themselves. <laughs> okay, come with us! I listened and followed them into a separated part of the cove, where they had a whole camp. And at its center was a radioactive hot spring. Everywhere's been affected by that meteor, huh? 
Then, in front of me, walked another masked figure. A blue duck? Hey, what are you looking at, huh? You judging me or something? Uh, no. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Good. It's always the T-Rexes that are so judgmental. Oh, and you there. You should do yourself a solid and buy a Fozo plush. Believe it or not, they're even better looking than I am. Okay. Ignore him. My people say you wish to pass through our cove? Then we need something from you. What? From there, one of the dinos led me to a devastated area on the beach. Palm trees were destroyed, and there was fire all around. A beast has made its way here. If you can capture it and stop its destruction, you will earn safe passage. Do we have a deal? On days 9 to 10, while making my way through the devastated beach, I heard loud rumbling. Wait, that sounds familiar. Oh no, the beast that destroyed Ned's home. As I realized this, the tree line bursted open, revealing a massive radioactive rhino. Destroy! Break! Destroy! Wait! But it didn't listen and charged through the terrain, wrecking trees, rocks, and anything in its path. Hey, get back here! Stop! I chased it as it ran through more and more trees. Calm down! Uh, sit! How about a treat? It was all of no use as it destroyed the last tree in the area. Finally, a dead end. But the beast then turned towards me. Destroy! Oh no. It lowered its head and charged right at me. Uh, uh, trying to slow it down, I used my webs on the ground, but it just leapt over them. This is not going to end good. <sighs> what a nice relaxing break. <laughs> Get out of the way. <gasps> Finally, I made it back to the Crystal Cove camp as the rhino tore through the town. You brought it here? I panicked, okay? As I said this, the rhino charged in, hitting me so hard that it sent me right into the radioactive hot spring. Ah! But as soon as I hit the water, the radiation soaked into me, causing me to gain even more power. I gained five more hearts and became even more powerful. Did I just grow stronger again? Help us! The small mass died Rhinos were being cornered by the rhino, but a new confidence surged within me. Stay away from them. As I jumped out of the spring, I threw out a web and realized I can control my web swinging now. I swung above the rhino and used his confusion to let out a huge roar, trapping him in a web prison. <laughs> can't destroy, can't break. Sad. Hopefully, you'll learn your lesson with this little timeout. All of the dinos then cheered and came towards me. Thank you. Thank you. You are granted passage through our lands for eternity. Thank you. Now, I'm on my way, uncle. On days 13 to 14, I finally made it to the foot of Stone Peaks, and there, flying throughout, were more pterodactyls. I tried to use my webs to swing up and get closer, but... Whoa! Ouch! How am I ever going to get used to that? I began to investigate and saw one of the land dinosaurs from before. They were all working under the green goblin's watch, building something. And those that tried to resist were instantly killed. I gotta do something. That's when I saw Uncle Benosaurus. But when I rushed towards him, I was suddenly hit from the side. Ah! Wait. You. Someone came here voluntarily. Hmm? Aha, very smart. Zip it and give me my uncle back. Wait, you're that little tiny T-Rex I saw. And I can see you've also been mutated. Hmm. Well, in that case, I'll give you one chance. Join me, and we'll see what our powers can really do to the rest of these filthy reptiles. 
for? You could die. I looked towards my weakened uncle, and without a second thought, I roared a web at the pterodactyl. But he dodged and immediately fired back with a powerful, explosive roar. Ah! On days 15 to 16, I was low on health between my uncle and the green goblin pterodactyl. I told you to run far, far away. Yeah, well, I couldn't just leave you. You're all the family that I have. The pterodactyl unleashed another attack, but I reacted quickly, creating a shield of web around us. Listen to me. These pterodactyls are planning something. Planning something? Like what? All I've heard is that it's centered around a volcano. A big boom. Yes, and if they aren't stopped, it could possibly be the end to not only land dinosaurs, but all creatures. Another explosion blasted against my webs. One more hit and they'll break. Okay, well, let's go then. We can hide and find a way to survive. And what? Let everyone else die? It's not the right thing to do. You need to escape here and do what's right. But what about you? My shield of webs finally shattered. <laughs> I will be a distraction. Go! Uncle Benosaurus charged into the pterodactyl. No, no! Leave now! Reluctantly, I rushed towards the exit tunnel. On days 17 to 18, I safely returned to base. No, my uncle. I still couldn't save him. Ah! I'm not going to be able to stop that pterodactyl. He's too strong. Then I heard Ned's voice. And if it's here, then it could be here too. Did you get some upgrades? Inside, he was busy planning and talking to himself. Ah! Whoa, calm down. It's me. Sorry, I've been busy. I'm trying to map out all the areas that the radioactivity has effects. It's so much more than we think. I couldn't stop the pterodactyl now, but if absorbing radiation made me stronger, maybe I could if we find more. Yeah, I've clearly missed a lot, uh, but besides the point, you're gonna want to see this. Ned led me over to an icy room he made in our base, and there was a small ice cyclops. I'm an ice clops, actually. Actually, thanks to the radiation. Wait, do you know where more is? Yeah, sadly. The radiation turned my entire home and people into icy creatures. I got split up from them. Well, we can help you get back to your people in exchange for more radiation. You want more radiation? Wow, you really are crazy. Okay, deal. On days 19 to 21, the Ice Clops and I journeyed to the entrance of a tundra valley that was undergoing a heavy snow storm. We have to get through here? It's the only way to enter the tundra. And if I went alone, it would have been a death sentence. Why's that? You don't want to know. We began to push through the valley until reaching a deep drop into a chasm below. The only way across is this thin ice bridge. Walking on this is a death sentence. Just then, ice spikes began to fall all around us. And on a nearby boulder was a saber-tooth tiger. It immediately leapt and tried to claw at me. Hey, where did you come from? I am Craven, the tundra's top. Hunter, and you are my prey. I tried to roar at him, but he just leapt through it and slashed at me again. His hit pushed me onto the icy bridge, which already started to crack. I guess I don't have a choice. On days 22 to 26, I was in a full sprint, trying to cross the collapsing bridge. No one escapes my hunt. Your hunt? Stay away from me. The bridge cracked under our combined weight, causing us both to fall. Ah! But I sent out my web, and for the first time ever, I was swinging with confidence. Woohoo! Craven was not giving up though, and leapt from rock to rock along the walls. Seriously? We both made a final jump, barely making it to the other side. Okay, stop. I don't want to fight you. Ray, don't get a say. He charged at me, just as a freezing pile of snow completely covered both of us. Ah! 
my vision blurred. And once it cleared, I realized that the snow was a trap. Craven and I were inside of a glacier arena surrounded by bandit penguins. And there, overseeing it all, was a giant mutated octopus. <laughs> Welcome to our side of the tundra. This is how we do things here. Release me at once. No way, pal. <laughs> Silence. Welcome to my experiment. Experiment? Why, yes. I am a doctor, after all. I specialize in researching the perfect form of entertainment. Battle for the death. What? For years, I've searched for which species would supply the best research. And you two are the best test subjects yet. So... In a burst of speed, Craven lunged and slashed at me. Ah! Tear off his head! What are you doing? Killing you. And then, when they let me out, I'll kill that octopus too. He attacked again, but I dodged. Stop! Look, we need to team up to escape this place, all right? I quickly looked around the arena and noticed the ice near the octopus was cracked. There! Look, if we both work together and slam into that wall, we can break free! Come on, what do you say? On days 30 to 32, Craven and I teamed up and charged at the ice wall. What are you doing? The octopus flailed as we crashed into it, causing the water and the octopus to flood into the arena. You're ruining my experiment! Sorry, Dr. Octopus, but your experiment sucks! It lashed out with its tentacles and started to slam down everywhere. Each one of his hits was so powerful. Ah! Uh, the water! We must get rid of it! Right! I tried to use my webs to cut off the water, but it wasn't working. Doc then raised his tentacle, about to strike Craven, but suddenly the wall began to freeze back over, cutting off the water. Wait, what? I looked up and there in the stand was the ice clops. Wait, you have ice powers? Yeah, I told you I'm an ice clops and I hate it. Whoa, okay. Jeez. Dr. Octopus was stuck, weakened without any water. No, I just wanted a perfect experiment. Yeah, this guy is crazy. <sighs> Thank you for saving me. I... Yes, I've decided that I won't keep trying to slash you into a million pieces. <laughs> Thanks. Come on. We aren't very far away from my home. On days 33 to 35, the ice clops brought me to a small camp in the tundra. The recently transformed frozen village was covered in glowing green ice. And in its center was a large radioactive ice glacier. As promised, the crystal is yours. Please take it. Of course. Thank you. I bit into the large radioactive ice as its power surged through me. I grew even stronger, gaining five more hearts and the ability to charge at my enemies. I even gained spidey senses. Whoa, sweet. But is it enough to take on the goblin pterodactyl? Yeah, I heard about him. Wait, you have? Uh, yeah. His crazy plan is impacting everyone. Whatever my people hear his laugh, we know to hide. He's building something. Rumors say it's a meteor, one that's bigger than that radioactive one. He's creating an entire meteor? That's not good. On days 36 to 39, I return to base, bringing all the ice clopses with me. It's not safe for you guys to be out there by yourselves anymore. You can stay here. I helped build up the icy room from before to fit all of them. Thanks. I still hate this ice stuff, but it's pretty all right. I'm glad to hear it. I turned to walk towards my home when I saw Ned looking really sad. Hey, what's the matter? I'm okay, I guess. That meteor just made me think a lot. My home's destroyed, and I wish I could do more than just this. Yeah, well, you've helped me a lot. Yeah, 
I guess, but I'm just a dodo bird. Yeah, a really smart one. Just then, we were interrupted by molten rock that exploded between us. Ah! More rocks began raining down from above. Huh? We rushed to check outside the base, only to see that in the distance was a deadly volcano, and it was very active. On days 40 to 44, the two of us approached the foot of the volcano. The goblin, he's here. Ned followed behind me as we found an entrance to its base. Just stay close. This place is crazy. Quiet. We snuck through until finally reaching the main chamber. There above a pool of lava was a giant meteor. It was being held up by multiple pillars in the chamber and more pterodactyls were there, forcing land dinosaurs to make it bigger. That's how he plans to use it. When this volcano erupts, it'll launch that thing right into the sky. And whenever it lands, who knows how much destruction it'll cause. We have to stop it. Now, I charge into the chamber, heading right towards the meteor. What? Are you crazy? With a powerful roar, my webs were wrapped around it, but the pterodactyls took notice and flew into attack. Ah! Before I could roar out again, one of them scooped me up and threw me into another room. Ow. <coughs> there before me was my uncle and the green goblin pterodactyl. Ah, the itsy bitsy spider fell right into my trap. Let my uncle go. Who? Him? He roared at Uncle Benosaurus, and its explosion made him so weak. Oh! No! I was about to run in, but he stopped me. You do anything, and he's dead. <laughs> I have eyes and ears everywhere. A spider rex traveling the world to stop my plans? I'm planning a miracle. Don't you see it? No. If you launch that meteor, even you pterodactyls will be killed. Can't you see that? And what's so bad about that? What's so bad with a little change, hmm? Well, you are about to experience a very, very big one. What? No! I lunged forward, but he blasted my uncle with another attack. Uncle Benosaurus fell to the ground weaker than ever. Pozo, listen to me. You have a gift, a power, and with great power comes great responsibility. Remember that? Remember. Uncle? No! I unleashed a roar louder than I ever had before, blasting the goblin out of the room. Uncle, he, he's gone. That pterodactyl, he's going to pay for this. I then heard a noise coming from nearby. What is that? On days 48 to 52, I made my way down a separate tunnel that revealed a caged dinosaur. Please, for the love of all reptiles, let me out before that goblin returns. I blasted open his cage, letting him go. You were another prisoner? That monster, he threatened my family. If I didn't do what he wanted, he would have killed them. Wait, what did he make you do? Before he could explain, the volcano began to rumble. Hurry, we need to get out of here first. We escaped to a distant clearing. Look, the radioactivity, it's changed a lot of dinosaurs. It made my people gain enhanced intelligence, hence the glasses. But then he forced me to create something for him. So you helped him design the meteor? Well, yes, but all I want to do is stop all of this. Back at my home, we may find a countermeasure to his plans. Okay, it's worth a try. Lead the way. On days 53 to 56, I followed the intelligent dinosaur into a whole futuristic city? All around were civilized dinos. Food! Get your food here! Oh, I'm starving. I'd like some food, please. You got any money? Uh, what's money? Ah, look at this idiot, Asaurus. Not so smart, are you? Rude. 
Ignore them. The facility that can help you is this way. He brought me over to the city's destroyed building? This is the facility? Doesn't look like much. No, no, no! This is the city's power plant. Something must have happened. Indeed, something bad happened. This plant is used to harness the radioactivity that transformed us. But not long ago, a power-hungry creature broke in, turning him into something else. Like what? Just then, thunder rang out from a distant mountaintop. Oh. <sighs> Oh, I have an idea. If you can lure that thing back here and trap it, we can siphon its radioactivity back and restore the plant. Here, take this beacon. It's sure to draw him in. All right, I'm on it. On days 57 to 59, the thunderstorm worsened as I got closer to the top of the mountain. Oh man, what kind of creature is this? The trees opened to a crystal arena. Whoa, lightning struck down near me and I looked up to see an electric dragon circling above. Now I, Electro, will be the strongest! Electro? What a lame name. Here goes nothing. I activated the device that drew in power before shooting up pure electric energy. But Electro didn't seem to notice. Oh, I guess I have to be closer. I saw the perfect spot with glowing crystal platforms leading up to it. Jumping from platform to platform, I used my spidey sense to know where the lightning would strike, dodging each one. <laughs> Piece of cake. I then leapt between the platforms, but the final one broke under me. Ah, ah. Okay, too close. Hey, you! I turned on the machine, finally gaining its attention. What? Who are you? Power? Electricity! It will be mine! Why did I think this would be easy? Ah! Stop running! On day 60 to 63, I raced back into the dinosaur city. Can you stop zapping me for like two seconds? <laughs> I was about to make it back to the power plant where I saw a newly built machine attached to it. That looks like the spot. Almost there. Suddenly, a yell caught my attention. One of the dragon's attacks ignited a building and a young raptor was trapped on the roof. Help me! No, what now? Glancing between the burning building and the plant, I knew that I had to make a decision. The floor under the raptor broke, but as they started to fall, I shot my webs, saving them just in time. Phew, thank goodness. Pathetic, you don't deserve your power. Ah! From one bolt of lightning, I was down to extremely low health. I will take your power, and after I kill you, I'll burn this whole city and everyone in it! Ah, uh, no, but I thought back to my uncle's words. With great power comes great responsibility. No, you won't! Using my remaining strength, I swung directly at the dragon, knocking him into the machine. Electro was now being held in the machine by his own radioactive electricity. Okay, what do I do now? There, hit that button. I saw it and made a break for it. My spidey senses tingled again as I nearly dodged his claws. No, no! With that, all the radiation was pulled from Electro as he exploded in an array of lightning. Whoa, thankfully no one was hurt and the radiation was stored in the machine. Yes. We can power the city again. I think I have a better idea. Hey, uh, Fozo, you said you need this stuff to stop that crazy pterodactyl, right? Yeah, I do, but... It's all right. You showed me today that you can be as smart as you want, but it's your bravery that shows what it means to be a hero. Please take it and use it to take down that goblin. I went up and absorbed the radiation, causing me to grow even stronger. I gained five more hearts and could now summon a chain of webs. Awesome. I looked around at all the destruction in the city, and I 
think I have an idea. On days 69 to 73, I return to base with the intelligent dinosaurs. Because of them and their high tech, we were able to build up new defenses with secure walls and reinforce our homes. Whoa, talk about smart. With all of this space, we need to find and shelter more dinosaurs, especially if that meteor hits. Yes, yes, yes! I looked over and saw Ned's home was now fully stocked with guy in the chair, technology, and equipment. This is sweet! Wow, look at how thankful he is. With that, I took some time to build up a grave for Uncle Benosaurus, placing a sign with his last words. I will stop the goblin for him and for everyone. Ned rushed up to me excitedly. Hey! Uh, oh, uh, sorry to interrupt. It's okay. What's up? Well, with this new gadget, I think I found something. I've detected a massive spike in radioactivity. Bigger than anything we've seen before. All right. Where is it? It's at my old home. On days 74 to 77, I made it into the bamboo forest. It didn't take long for me to see that mutated mushrooms took over the area with walking mushrooms? What the? Just before one of them saw me, I was hit into a hidden cave by a monkey. Whoa, what's going on out there? Look around. Our once beautiful jungle has been overtaken by the very plants that filled it. Mushrooms. There's always something. I looked out into the forest and noticed a tall radioactive tree in the distance. That's what caused these mushrooms to come to life. So we break the tree. We destroy the mushrooms. I ran up to the massive trunk and tried to take it down with all my strength, but it wouldn't budge. Ah, come on. Oh, wait, our king could take it down easily. He's been mutated from this stuff too. The only thing is those mushrooms captured him. Well, where did they take him? On day 78 to 80, we approached the mutant mushroom camp. Their gross fungi was starting to spread throughout the entire jungle. Ugh, gross. We can't even eat bananas anymore, man. <laughs> it sucks. I then saw the Monkey King, a green mutated gorilla. He fought to break out of his stone cage, but the mushroom guards were keeping a close watch. How do we free him? Do I look like a mushroom? I don't know. Okay, okay, shush. Just stay close behind. We stealthily navigated the camp, avoiding the mushrooms as they patrolled. <laughs> The two mushrooms went down a tunnel. Let's follow them. We did until arriving in an underground kitchen. Wait, are they eating smaller mushrooms? Okay, that's just messed up, man. Wait, look. I saw across the room was a switch. There. As I went over to flip it, I stumbled into a large mushroom guard. His call alerted all the others in the camp. Oh, no. It came close and tried tried to slam into me with its head. Thankfully, I dodged over the switch and flipped it. <laughs> Hulk smash! On days 81 to 85, I ran up to the surface and watched as the Gorilla Hulk was rampaging throughout the camp. Yes! But then from behind me came the large mushroom guard. Whoa! I used my new web chains to take him down. You... Me? Yep, to help us destroy that tree. You in? Quickly, Hulk leapt up to the trees as I swung to keep up behind him. Tree smash! Yep, right there with you. Glad you got the point. Together, we reached the radioactive tree. And with a mighty slam, Gorilla Hulk caused the entire thing to collapse. Because of this, the essence of the tree flowed through the air and into me. I gained 10 more hearts and became came even stronger. I'm the most mutated T-Rex ever. Looking around, I noticed the monkeys and their king were so happy. As I said this though, I felt the ground rumbling beneath us. Oh no, the meteor, it's complete. On days 86 to 90, I ran as fast as I could to the volcano and there was the goblin. You little dinosaurs, line up! It's time!
Time for the show! All the land dinosaur prisoners were being forced into cages at the foot of the volcano. The meteor was ready, and the volcano is about to erupt. Finally, my big boom is here! <laughs> I need to save them, but I'm gonna need some backup. Oh no, I gotta hurry. On days 91 to 94, I went back to base and quickly gathered everyone. That volcano, it's ready. Are we safe here? What are we gonna do? Hey, hey, everyone calm down. We've got this. Listen up. I know some of you are scared and that's okay. It's normal to feel scared, but it's what we do in these moments that matter. My uncle taught me many things, but I know one thing for sure. And it's that we all have to do the right thing. It's our responsibility. And I could use a little bit of help carrying that weight. Are you guys up for it? I'm with you. You can count on us, Fozo. Ah, uh, what the heck? Yes, yes, I'll help. Thank you. Now, here's the plan. On days 95 to 99, Ned and I stood in the clearing of the foot of the volcano. Well, if it isn't the itsy bitsy spider come to burn like the rest of them, we're here to stop you! You can't go through with this! Please, I'm not asking again. Oh, you're trying to scare me now? <laughs> oh, get him! Groups of pterodactyls came flying into attack, but as they got close... Can I do it? Can I do it? No! Ned frantically jumped in the air and flapped his wings. That's the signal! Fire! With that, a barrage of high-tech missiles flew in and exploded the pterodactyls. What? Yes! With that distraction, the lizard snuck around and picked all the locks on the cages. Go! Go! Run that way! Over the hill! Suddenly, the ground shook, and out from the volcano spouted small meteors. No! I was about to run and help the dinosaurs escape, but... It's okay, Fozo! We can take him out! You just need to deal with... Him. On day 100, I felt like the whole earth began to shake as I ran up the volcano to finally come face to face with the goblin. Stupid! Ah, I didn't need those fools anyways! All I need is right here! My perfect plan has come into being! <laughs> It won't! We began to fight as his explosive attacks hit me extremely hard, but I was prepared. I used all the abilities I had gained along the way, my spidey senses and webs to even dodge his attacks. Uh, yeah. With a powerful explosive, Goblin sent me back towards the edge of the volcano. Ah. Poor Spider X. I bet your Uncle Benosaurus would be so disappointed in you right now to come so far and still fail. It shook violently as I could see the meteor down below. No, I can do this. I know that my uncle is proud of me because I'm doing the right thing. Just as the meteor rose up, I roared with more power than I ever had before, causing a massive web to shoot over the peak of the volcano, trapping the meteor inside. What? Impossible! My spider senses caught on to his attack as I died and hit him head on with my webs, taking down the goblin for good. And with that, the entire dinosaur world could now somewhat live in peace.